Hi, welcome to our presentation on adapting animals. I'm Emily Stewart. I run track, cross country, sing in the choir, and play in the band. Hi, my name is Dominic Palmieri, and I'm a junior at Manhattan High School. I run cross country and track, and I also swim. So do you know what warm and cold-blooded animals are? Cold-blooded animals are animals like reptiles, amphibians, and fish, and they use sources that are outside of their bodies in order to stay warm. They take in the temperature of the environment around them. Warm-blooded animals are birds and mammals. Mammals have fur, and they need to maintain a constant body temperature. The humans' average body temperature is 98.6 degrees. So we have a quick game called Which is Which? So I'm gonna name off an animal and you say which category you think it belongs in. The first one is a chicken. How about a snake? A dog? A lizard? A monkey? And a shark? Now that you've said which categories you think they're all in, we're gonna show you the answers. So in the left category, with, would be warm, which would be warm-blooded, we have the monkey, the dog, and the chicken. And in the cold-blooded, we have the lizard, the snake, and the shark. So some ways that animals would keep their energy up if they were cold-blooded would be, again, using the temperature around them, they would rely on the sun a lot. They slow down in the cold weather to conserve energy. And warm-blooded animals require lots of food nor and keep up a, to keep up a high energy. Their food, the food that they eat, is used to make energy and maintain their consistent body temperature. So what are some ways that humans might warm up or cool down to adapt to the temperature in their environment? The answer that we had was sweating or shivering. What are some ways that dogs would warm up or cool down? We had panting and because dogs don't sweat like humans do, they only sweat in between their toes. They have to pant to breathe in cold air and cool themselves down. What about polar bears? What we had is they have thick fur and blubber that helps keep them warm. What about snakes? We had laying in the sun, moving to shade, and seeking shelter. And penguins. What we had was penguins will huddle together in groups in order to share body heat to keep warm. And they also puff their feathers out and trap air in for insulation. So kind of like when you put a jacket on and that air inside warms up and keeps you warm, penguins will puff out their feathers and trap in the air. And once it warms up, it helps to keep them warm. Hibernation is something that animals do and it's very similar to sleeping and it's where their breathing will slow down and their heartbeat and they use very little energy. During hibernation, animals don't have to eat very much to survive. Do you guys know some examples of hibernation? What we had were bears, bugs, and birds. And usually, bears will hibernate all winter, bugs will hibernate all winter so that they can survive until the summer, and birds will only hibernate depending on how cold it is outside. Do you know what burrowing is? Burrowing provides shelter, gives animals a place to hibernate, allows nocturnal animals to escape the light of the day, and allows desert animals to escape the heat. It allows animals that live in, cold, in the cold to keep warm as well. All right, now we're gonna show you our hedgehog, Luna. So this is Luna, and she is a hedgehog. 
yeah, she adapts to temperatures um, by high on special defense called quills. And they poke up on her back when she's disturbed. She originated in Europe. She's five years old. And Luna eats insects and cat food. Thank you guys so much for watching our video. <laughs> That's what Luna looks like all curled up. Um, there are a lot of other great videos out there from Wide Horizons, so please go and check them out. Bye!